Hi, and welcome to the Magellan Network Show. Hey, we are going to start our annual multi-episode conversation about strategic planning for the upcoming year. And let's face it, you know, it's been a very, uh, very uh, challenging year for all advisors, right? Uh, 2020 with COVID, national election, and uh, things like that. So what I want to do in today's episode is really, you know, make the argument, if you will, or hopefully persuade and influence you and inspire you on why to put some time, energy, and effort in putting a plan together, not just for 2021, uh, but also for you know many years going forward. Uh, before we get into that, let me give you a little planning background, if you will. So uh, this year, um, next month in December, I will host my 19th annual business planning conference. Now, this year will be a virtual conference, right? Because of just everything going on in our world. Uh, so, you know, even my world, I've had to pivot and create something uh, to serve my client base. So it's been my 19th one. Here's what I find. If you are serious about your future, your business, your success, you need a roadmap, a plan to put together that will get you from point A to point B. Okay. Very, very important. Second piece, quite frankly, is that, you know, if you're going to go talk to your clients about, hey, our prospects, hey, we need to put together a financial plan or, you know, we need to go ahead and go through this planning project because you need a roadmap. You need a game plan to have a retirement game plan, a roadmap for your, you know, for your money, stuff like that. And yet you are operating uh, like, you know, seat of the pants, right? Making it up as you go. Um, that is very incongruent and it's unprofessional, right? The other reason why you want to put a plan together is it's a vision you create. If you don't have a vision, if you don't sit there and say here, and the way we do it is, you know, I, we start with, you know, not start with, but part of the elements is we put together a five-year plan. So, you know, here we are 20, you know, we've gone 2021. So I will have you think out five years and have you put together a couple pages on what your world to look like personally and professionally in 2026. And I know some of you are sitting there going, but how do you know? Well, you don't know. But reality is this. You'll set a stake in the ground and you'll create a target. And when you create that target, you know, you'll start moving towards it. You'll start, it'll be our destination for the next five years. Right? Inside that roadmap is where we start looking at, okay, what are the goals? Why are the goals, right? How we're going to get there? Who do we need to become? And in a future episode, I'm really going to do, give you guys a deep, deep dive in those four areas of goal setting. The goal, why, how, who, right? But that's not going to be in today's episode. You want to have that roadmap so that you can sit there and say, okay, if I want to be here in five years, right? So what do we do? We extrapolate down. So if we want to be there in five years, what do we need to accomplish in 2021? Personally and professionally. Right? This is some deep thought. So here's the interesting part. That when I say roadmap, I'm not just talking for a, from a business perspective. So here's my 19 years. So for the first 10 years of the 19, um, I was primarily 95% focused on a client's business. And what I realized was that through my planning process, and we were able to really detail it all down with marketing and game plans and stuff like that, is that I was, I was excellent at helping a client get clear on what they wanted their business to do. And then I would hold them accountable. We drive towards it. And the uh, shockingly, right, fascinatingly, um, they would hit their goals. And most of them were financial, right, because that's what we focused on, you know, household, assets, rev, things like that. And what I noticed was there was a very, very interesting phenomenon that was happening where I had, I had clients that were, you know, hitting their economic goals and sometimes even exceeding their economic goals and they were not happy still. They were not fulfilled, right? And fulfillment and happiness is really the targets we all seek. We may not, we may not uh, articulate them that way. But if you want to look at a human being who's really living life at a high level, that human being is going to be operating in a very fulfilled state, in a very happy state. Economics are part of that, so I'm not discounting them like you can throw them away. But it's not all about the money. So I had this epiphany 
um, after I kind of looked at kind of my, my body of work at that time. And I said, you know, the fatal flaw in my planning process up until this point has been that we've, uh, we've kind of put the business in a box and we focused on it. And if you really think about how we all live as advisors, right, it's really there's the lines are blurry, aren't they? Right. When are you an advisor? When are you when are you on? When are you off? When is this? When is that? So, you know, when I really start to kind of, you know, kind of peel that back, I, I realize that, you know, being an advisor is really a lifestyle gig. And whether that life, whether that is in the form of a solopreneur, right, uh, an ensemble, or an enterprise, so one advisor, maybe a part-time assistant, lean, mean, very profitable, a little bit of a team here, right, and then you know, multi-advisor, billion-dollar enterprise, things like that, right? It's still a lifestyle game. So over the last 10 years, I've been refining, refining the process now, where we really do, you know, talk about. It. So when we say five years, I mean personally also. So we also have you put together a personal game plan uh, where we integrate both life and business. Because what I used to, what most advisors do, and I totally understand it now, is that we build our business and our life revolves around it, it kind of orbits it, if you will, right? My way of thinking now is, hey, we what's the lifestyle you want? And then what does the business need to look like to serve it? And when I made that shift about a decade, a little over a decade ago now, it transformed my process to where I really found a way for advisors to plan to, in essence, have their cake and eat it too. And this is probably the only profession I'm aware of where you can have economic abundance and time freedom. However, you've got to plan for it. It doesn't happen by happenstance. So if you go into your game and your concept every year is to just do a little bit better than the year before, I call it the more better, right? Do more, be better. Make more, be better. A lot of times what you end up creating for yourself, and I see this over and over again in this industry, is you end up creating a well-paying job. I'm dealing with a person now, a new client, and uh, she's very successful economically, and it feels like her world is on fire every day. I want to be very clear when I make the statement, I'm not trying to say this is like that, so just bear with me. But if I had to put a metaphor around it or an example, it would be like being a uh, emergency room uh, doctor in a heavy COVID world where you just have people coming in all day. It's like it's like triage all day long, right? Like you just you every time you turn around, there's something new going. Like there's no there's no semblance of order, right? That's the way this person's business is, and yet she's very successful economically. But if you ask her, are you happy? Are you fulfilled? No. So that's what happens when you just kind of come into the game every year and think the more better. You end up, and it's not, and it's like the frog in the pot, right? It's not like you jump the dump the frog in the boiling water and the frog, it's like it's a slow simmer. You don't realize it until one day you wake up and go, I got no freedom. I'm making money, but man, I I, I you know, I, I got too much to do and and you know I'm not leading my team properly. I'm 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 just you know, I'm just reacting to things, and that's what happens. So that is one of the key reasons why you want to put a plan together. Especially now, if you're if you're listening and watching me, and I and I'm like, dude, that just sounds like me. It will not change for you until you put a stake in the ground, and re and because what are you going to change it to? So here's the problem, right? So I don't like what I have. I don't like what I have, right? I mean I like the money. Don't get me wrong, but uh, this is not sustainable, right? I'm not fulfilled. I'm not happy. Well, what's what are you gonna do, right? And and unless you have something to to morph into, right? That is built. It's like a blueprint, right? Let's say how like I don't like my house. I want to change it. Okay, great. Every year you say that, but you never sit down with a builder or an architect to drop. Well, hey, let's renovate this. Let's let's come up with a game plan, right? Until you take those steps to make it real, human beings default to what they know. It's rinse. I call it rinse and repeat, right? Do the same thing over and over again. So if you're not happy in your situation, then you've got to put a, a game plan, a blueprint together to, to what do you want so that you can get moved towards something that's going to inspire you. And that must be in writing. Simple. If you also don't have a plan, here's what happens. You end up in what I call survival mode. And it's a little bit like it's a very close to like more better. 
And so if, in one case, I'm economically abundant, but I'm not happy. The other situation is I am not economically abundant, right? I'm getting by by the skin of my teeth. I do okay, but I've got this, I've got this economic insecurity. I'm one bad quarter away, right? And it's unfortunate, but I've seen this in my, you know, almost three decades, or oh, actually three decades now. And people live their entire career that way. It's like they're like in startup mode for decades because they never shift and they never pivoted their game. They end up in more better mode. Then by March, when there was no real game plan, guess what? You default back to what you know. And that's that's what happens. You know, we end up with a, I get excited. It's a new year. This is going to be my year, right? And you say that to yourself. And then, and then you say, I'm going to make all these changes. I'm going to get organized. I'm going to get up early. I'm going to get to the office early. I'm going to put together a, a daily game plan, right? And you do that. Maybe you will yourself to do that for a couple of weeks. But here's the problem. You don't have a lot of momentum. And then you don't see the results. And then you start questioning things. And, you know, in my experience is by February 15th, most advisors are back into their old patterns again. Why? They never put a game plan together. And what we need to remember, so let me kind of give you a little, little piece here. So I believe there are three conditions for all advisors, probably for all human beings for that matter. Uh, one is going to be scarcity, survival. One is going to be abundance. And one is going to be prosperity. Now, differences. Scarcity, survival, and I'm going to try to equate this economically, so just kind of bear with me on this without putting numbers on it because everybody's going to be in a different situation. Scarcity, survival means your take-home revenue is at or around what you need to live somewhat of the life you want. So, um, you know, you, you, you know, you have a roof over your head, your kids are going to school, uh, you make your car payments, make your house payments, uh, you have a little money to go on vacation, you you're carrying some credit card debt. Um, but man, you know, it's, it's, it's skinny, man. It's like really, really, really skinny. Right. And you stress over where's next month's production going to come from. Right. That's like, like, that's a stressor. And for some people they get so used to that in their career that they just think that's normal. That's just a normal way of doing things. Right. So that's, that's scarcity survival mode. Right. And, uh, and what comes from scarcity survival mode, which is a little sidebar for a second is that the advisor in that scarcity survival, in that psychology, in that loop, and it's a loop and a pattern, quite frankly, um, what happens is that they they try to break out by changing what they do, and ultimately it is unsuccessful because what they need to change is how they think, what they believe. They also need to insert new dynamics, right? So if you're in the same environment, in the same pattern, in the same thought process, why do you think anything's going to change for you? Right? I mean, just, just hear that out loud. So if you want change, elevation, right? You got to scramble that record. You got to change that pattern. What you've got to do is put new dynamics, new relationships, uh, new tribe, new associations, change your environment. Like you got to like make it different, right? To get from scarcity to survival to the next level, which is abundance. Now, abundance is really cool. Most advisors think abundance is the goal. Here's why it's not. Abundance is I'm making more than enough money, so I'm put I'm you know I'm putting money away. I don't really have that um, financial insecurity, right? Month to month, quarter to quarter. Um, I take my trips, I drive the car, I have the house, stuff like that, and life is good. It also can be very boring because you're like, okay, we all and well, by the way, all of us have this in our brain. Think about this. When you got in this business. There was, a, there was a conversation you had. If I can just make X, my, my world is great, right? We've all done, I mean, I'm, we've done it here. I've done it here. Then you get to that number, you go, this is not nearly enough. They're like, no, 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 no. So we go plus, right? And then we arrive at that economic goal. And we're like, better, still not feeling it. And it could like literally from 100,000 to quarter million to half a million to a million dollars. And, and I work with several people that, you know, they'll, they'll put a million dollars in their pocket every year uh, prior to our conversation, prior to our work. And like I said, they were economically successful. They were abundant, but they weren't prosperous. So abundance is like, so everything's cool. It's like a giant comfort zone. It's boring. Like what's next? So prosperity, let's talk about prosperity. So this is to me is the ultimate target. Prosperity is where money is not an issue anymore. 
you make two, three, four, five times what your lifestyle is. So it's not about that. It's really about legacy. What do you want to leave behind? Grooming successors, um, giving back to the community. This is where we practice the art and science of fulfillment. So, uh, so prosperity is fulfillment, right? That's what it ultimately is, fulfillment and happiness, where everything's resonating at a high level. And I know some of you are sitting there going, that doesn't sound possible. I can give you client upon client upon client upon client who have achieved this, who have done this. So it's not some concept. It's not some laboratory experience. It's what happens. And then the last reason why you want to do a plan, you need to get focused, especially if you're going to be a leader. So here's the thing. If you lead a team, right, junior advisor, uh, staff, assistant, staff, things like that, and if you're not sitting down with them every January and saying, let me give you an update on our corporate vision. Let me walk you through what we're going to create over the next five years, but more importantly, what we're going to create in 2021. If you're not, if you don't have your team on a common vision where they all know what we're looking to achieve here and what we're looking to build, and you don't have that collective synergy, you are failing as a leader. And then you wonder why the tribe and your team is not optimal, not world-class, not championship level, because you're not leading it. And the reason why you're not leading it is you've never painted a vision for it. And I know some of you are going to sit there and say, well, I pay my people a lot of money. It shouldn't matter. It matters. Let me explain the difference real quick. And second sidebar for this episode, then we're going to get you out of here. Um, there's, here's the difference between leadership and management. Management is really about, about two things, right? Fear and bribery. What do I mean by that? Fear. If you don't do this, you're fired, you know, or, or you're not going to raise, or, you know, you, this is what you need to, in other words, you kind of put your thumb on them, right? Bribery. Here's all the bonuses. Look, here's all the cash. Hey, man, if you behave this way, we're going to pay you this, right? And I'm not saying there's anything wrong with that, but don't, don't extrapolate as a leader why well, pay my people well, and I hold them accountable to that they're happy and fulfilled, right? Remember, there's three levels, right? There's who has a job. Who has a career and who is a who is a stakeholder? Ultimately, you want stakeholders. Stakeholders are people or team members who buy into your vision, assuming it's there. Okay, so never forget that. So as a leader, we want to go ahead and make sure we have that. Now, what leadership is about, like I just said, is is you have a shared vision and shared values with your team where the money's nice and we don't mind the carrots and stuff like that, but we're here because we want to contribute, because we buy into that vision. Then you don't have to worry about what your team does. You don't have to, you don't have to worry about their hours and what they're accomplishing, what they're doing. You trust them implicitly. Why? Shared vision. So here's what we're going to do as we wrap up this episode. Because again, I always, always want to keep these things around 20 minutes. I want you to take our conversation today. And I want you to just do a check-in with yourself. Where am I? Am I in scarcity? Survival? Am I abundant? Am I prosperous? Where am I? How am I going to lead my team in 2021? Because we're not out of the woods yet. Right? I believe I, my personal belief is we will be in 2021 at some point, but I have no illusion of or delusion, I should say, of what's going to happen early in the year. So you better lock down your game plan. And here's what I'll also say about this year. As I watch clients now start prepping for business planning and what we're going to do, we always do a review. We always kind of look at KPIs, right? Revenue, things, other things like, like there, there's, you know, 15, 20 KPIs. I would say probably all my clients are going to be up this year over last year. Some are going to be up 20, 30%, and we're not talking about new businesses. So I know for a fact that the opportunities out there at some levels are actually greater than they were a year ago. Yes, the game has shifted, but the opportunities are still there. So here's my offer to you. I will be hosting in December a multi-day virtual planning process where I'm going to walk you through all this. There is a link 
here, if you're looking at the show notes, uh, that will take you there. You get all the information. It is not a heavy lift. It is not a heavy ask economically. I did that on purpose. Uh, the website is FA, of course, www, of course, www.fa, biz, B-I-Z, P-L-A-N.com, F-A, bizplan.com. If what you see there inspires you, step into my game. Let me help you put a game plan together for 2021. Okay. So next episode, we're going to talk, we're going to kind of unpeel this back a little more, talk about planning processes. Uh, we'll talk about um, landmines, why things, why advisors fail at planning. We'll talk a little bit about that. But again, in this episode, I wanted to make the case to each and every one of you why this is not an option going forward. Thank you for listening. Thank you for watching this episode of the Magellan Network Show. See you next week. So there you have it. If you really enjoyed watching this episode, go ahead and subscribe to the Magellan Network Show with Coach Joe here on YouTube. And remember, I'm always here to help you become a better entrepreneur, business owner, and financial advisor. With that, I'll see you next time on the Magellan Network Show with me, Coach Joe. Take care and goodbye.